Hello there, this is Leo Ward for Kit Guru, and this is the Corsair H110i GT liquid cooling all in one system. Uh, Corsair, it would appear, is doing its best to dominate the world with uh, a range of models that just covers every permutation you might possibly think of because they're actually launching three liquid coolers in quick succession. The 110i GT is a 280mm radiator with two 140 fans. Uh, we're also having the H80i GT which is a 120 radiator but two fans so push-pull and the H100i GTX 240 radiator, two fans. It so happens that this cooling system here on the uh, table is actually an H100i, so 240 radiator, two fans, uh, and the i means it has the um, uh, USB connection, uh, which goes in there, uh, which uh, hooks up to uh, your PC and then runs uh, Corsair's Link software. So we've got a number of models coming. Um, the reason I've got the H100i on the table here is because the radiator is the same thickness as this 110i GT, which is installed in this case, and it's up in the roof so you can't actually see it. Um, the radiator in both cases is 28.5mm thick, that's an overall dimension. So clearly Corsair has found a radiator thickness that works, it's a very convenient size, it's not super chunky, and then it's a question of how long do you want it, and um, do you want uh, one, two, or four fans? Uh, so you 120, 240, uh, 140, 280, and then fans either side or on one side. Uh, you wouldn't think, would you, there are quite so many permutations of uh, liquid cooler on the market, but goodness me, you'd be wrong. Um, now then, the H100i here, the pump unit is 32mm thick, a uh, pump water block unit. And on this uh, updated 110i GT, it's uh, thicker, it's 37mm thick. Also, cosmetically, it looks somewhat different. Uh, here we have um, a, a shiny black uh, Corsair logo with illumination in the middle. Uh, this is slightly different. It's got a little cap that pops off. Uh, you can see the photos on Kitgaru's website that explain all that. The mounting mechanism is exactly the same um, and has been now for a while um, with Corsair's liquid coolers, which makes perfect sense because it works blooming well. So for Intel um, LGA 1150 and um, 55, 56, you put this bracket on the back of your motherboard. This goes over the uh, pump unit, like so, magnetic, and then you have some uh, uh, studs and uh, nuts that uh, hold it all down. Uh, alternatively, you get uh, some, uh, for the Extreme Edition uh, LGA 2011, you have four different studs that go into the frame on the motherboard, and then that drops over, four nuts hold it all down. Uh, AMD system is somewhat different, but not a lot. You basically have uh, this bracket, goes over the pump unit, and then you have two uh, little sort of hooks that go over the plastic AMD frame, and that works perfectly well. Uh, and the common stuff is uh, fan header, SATA power connector to power the unit, and then you have uh, fan connections that go into the body and also a USB connection for the Link software. And the Link software, uh, you can see inside the case, I'm just going to refer to this monitor that's out of sight. Uh, so at the moment we've got, um, there we go, red light, more red light on the Corsair logo, go up. And now we've got a funky turquoise and so on and so forth. Um, the colour control and you can pulse it and you can cycle it and all the rest of it. it it's all good fun. Uh, in a sense, it's irrelevant, but it is quite nice when you have a windowed case to show off the Corsair logo and obviously a nice bit of marketing for them. Um, the main uh, feature of the Link software, of course, is it's for temperature monitoring and for controlling the profiles of the fan. Uh, so reach for my numbers. By default, uh, the fans in this instance um, are in silent mode, which is 500 RPM, which really is silent. Uh, cooling wasn't terrific. Um, next mode up is quiet mode. Fans are at 1000 RPM. You can just about hear them, but quiet is a very good summary of the situation. Balanced mode, 1800 RPM, was getting noisy. Performance, uh, 2000 RPM, and that was quite loud. And then I've got a note here, maximum is 2250 RPM. Ouch, stop it. Uh, so they've given plenty of options. In addition, you can construct a custom curve uh, or you can use a fixed speed. Fixed speed would seem to be to be a bit sort of dumb. Uh, makes much more sense to have the thing idling away uh, when the system is not under load and then crank it up. <clears throat> so uh, 
The hardware I've used here is of some interest. This is a Thermaltake Core V51E uh, ATX case. Um, it's the first time I've used it. I've got to get around to doing a review of it. I picked it basically because I had it and it's a large box as you can see. There is heaps of space in this case for a, a cooler and that 280mm radiator, it has vanished in the roof. There's plenty of space at the front of the case as well. Um, works nicely. Powering the board we've got uh, a the Seasonic uh, Platinum 2 1200 watt power supply and the graphics card is a Sapphire R9290 Trix. Uh, the motherboard and processor however is something interesting in the sense that it's an MSI 970 Gaming uh, with an AMD FX processor and um, you don't generally see those getting an outing um, because we're all Intel fans aren't we? The reason that I went for that and I'm referring here to the Corsair Reviewers Guide is that when they're talking about uh, performance testing recommendations, they say due to the um, extremely high thermal capacity, especially this particular cooling system, they, uh, Corsair recommends against using LGA1150 uh, processors to test it, uh, basically because the processors don't dissipate enough heat to give the cooling system a workout. Um, they say specifically they rarely dissipate more than 140 watts of heat. And uh, the Core i7-4770K, which is um, what reviewers mainly have, uh, doesn't actually work too well in terms of thermal con conductivity. You crank it up past, you know, you let the turbo go wild, it's good. And then past a certain point, it, it doesn't really respond too well. So they actually say, we recommend employing one of Intel's Haswell E Extreme processor, in other words, uh, such as the Core i7-5960X, which starts at 140 watts and when overclocked can dissipate nearly 300 watts of heat. <clears throat> now, I can't disagree with Corsair's point of view here. What they're saying is if you've got a mainstream Intel board, don't bother about our cooler because it's too good for the processor. And they're quite correct. Um, on the other hand, if you've got an Extreme Edition processor, you know, good on you. Well, the thing is, the Extreme Edition processors, you're talking 600 to 800 pounds. And realistically, I very much doubt that you have such a processor. So uh, I've gone for AMD FX because the thing is, AMD FX, it's a toasty processor. Now you'll see all the numbers. I'm not, I'm not going to sit here reciting figures to you. Um, you. You'll see the figures on KitGuru with pretty graphs and such like. Uh, but th the reason I tend to shy away from AMD FX is that it's a fairly crude processor. Uh, eight cores howling away, far too much heat and it does need a decent cooler. It's a relatively cheap processor, uh, and it does deliver a reasonable amount of performance. It's just not very sophisticated. And the thing is, blimey, does this cooler ever keep it under control? It does a fine job. In the default silent mode, to be honest, it, it, it didn't struggle, not by a long chalk, but the temperature wasn't as low as I expected when we absolutely caned the processor with our Prime 95, which is a brutally unfair benchmark that just sets all the cores howling away. And in silent mode, the cooler, it, it, the temperature's got a tad higher than I wanted. Um, having said that, it was still cool. When I moved up to quiet mode, it was just under control. I mean, for a laugh, I did ramp up the speeds and, uh, and to, to, to loud performance mode, and it was just totally unnecessary and frankly unpleasant. Um, but you have the option, you just don't need to use it. So the 280mm radiator with the two 140 fans uh, work very effectively. Uh, as you'll see from the graphs. Now, updates from the H100i to this H110 um, uh, IGT. We've got braided hoses, uh, which I quite like. The uh, plain rubber hoses on the, the sort of the conventional cooler, they work perfectly well. I've never had a problem with them sort of being kinked. Um, provided you put them through a sensible arc, they're no trouble at all when you install. Uh, I, I do actually like the look of the braided hose. Um, a word uh, to the wise, however, which is that if you get some heatsink compound on that, um, I did get a small dab on there, it, it just goes on and you're not going to wipe it off. It's, it's going to be there forevermore, so just, just take care. Um, uh, yes, so we've got the Corsair Link software as per, we've got the Illuminated logo as before, we've got braided tubing. So essentially, this H110i GT is an update of the existing H110i uh, 280mm radiator 2140 fans. Uh, pricing appears to be consistent. Uh, at the moment, it's looking like £105 in the UK, or you can go for the slightly smaller H100i, reach for it yet again, 240 version. Uh, which is £97. Um, 
so there's not a lot of money in it. So my instinct would be to go for the bigger radiator. If your case can accommodate it, why not? It means you've got bigger fans, they can spin a bit slower, you've got a bit more coolant in the system. In terms of the cash difference, it's, it's £10. Uh, in this instance, bigger, it's not necessarily better. It gives you a few more options. Provided your case can accommodate it, the bigger version is better for me than the smaller version. Um, would I update if I had the uh, current 280 to this slightly updated with braided hoses and slightly funkier uh, pump body? Um, instinct is I very much doubt it because the truth of it is that this uh, AMD FX processor, while howling away, it didn't stress this cooler, not one jot. Now, if you have an 800 pound uh, Intel Extreme Edition process. You might be thinking to yourself, hmm, I want the Max. I want this liquid cooling system. This is for me. And I can't disagree with that. However, I suspect if you spent that much money on the processor plus a boatload of uh, quad, quad channel memory, and you've also gone for a high end motherboard and a really posh case, I suspect you've uh, actually constructed your own liquid cooling system. I shouldn't think you're using off the shelf. It will work absolutely fine of that, I am quite certain. Uh, but I doubt that you're in that market. If you're going down the Extreme Edition route with two or three graphics cards and all the rest of it, I imagine you've got your own custom water cooling loop. So there we have it. The um, the reviewer's guide has got all the usual bump in it about the difference between one cooler and another. Uh, for me, the most interesting thing, however, is their recommendation. They recommend against using this system with an LGA 11.5X, so 1155, 1156, or 1150 uh, processor, uh, which of course is it's another way of flipping that around is to say, if you are in the mainstream, the, I don't know what, 90, 95% of the gaming PC market that uses uh, Haswell um, or possibly Iverbridge, what, what Corsair is actually saying here is don't use this cooler. It, you don't need it. It's too good for you. Uh, it's, it, it just cools more effectively than your processor requires. Your processor with a TDP of 70 something or maybe 85 watts, you're just not even going to touch the capacity of this liquid cooling system, you can get away with something far, far inferior, um, which is a nice way of looking at it. On the other hand, if you're an AMD customer, um, God love you because you're in a very small minority, if you've got an AMD FX, uh, this sort of cooling system could absolutely be the thing for you. So there we go. This is Leo Wardock for Kit Guru, and this is the Corsair H110i GT all-in-one liquid cooling system.